Now at 6, drivers in Crawford County can expect increased police presence for the holiday weekend. Plus, healthcare workers in Southeast Kansas help residents sign up for can care benefits. And the Joplin Public Library celebrates the return of some familiar faces. The four states most watched news starts now. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office announces a traffic enforcement campaign for Memorial Day. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Tanya Bach. KOAM's Amber Jenkins is in the studio with more. More deputies will be out patrolling highways and secondary roads this Memorial weekend. And that's thanks to a special traffic enforcement grant. Officers involved with the seasonal campaign can track their overtime hours and contact with the public to receive extra overtime in return. According to the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office, patrolling deputies are keeping an eye out for drivers traveling at unsafe speeds, impaired, and other traffic infractions. Yeah, absolutely. The increase of officers, um, it's anticipated 44 million Americans are going to travel through the Memorial Day weekend holiday. So it's important to have extra patrol whether it's the Highway Patrol or City Police Department or the Sheriff's Office out enforcing traffic safety to ensure that motorists are getting where they need to get safely. The campaign will continue until June 2nd. Well, meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at your weather. It was a really nice day today. Temperatures got up to upper 80s right now, 85. We have some fair weather clouds, but we're not seeing any type of rain moving through the area tonight. North of us is getting some rain, but we're going to stay dry, dry and warm. 88 in Nevada, 86 in Sedan, 81 in Pittsburgh, cooler a little bit in Pittsburgh, uh, 85 in Anderson. So we're still in the 80s and it's getting into the later afternoon hours. So this is about the time of the year that we're going to start sticking into the 80s, even getting up to the 90s for our highs. So you might want to start getting prepared for that. We've got some rain moving north of us in Kansas City. They're going to get some rain tonight, but we're just getting some clouds. We do have some severe weather moving through tomorrow afternoon, and I'll have more details for you in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Representatives from the Cherokee County Health Department assisted residents today with information about King Care and Medicaid. The goal for the event at the Galena City Hall was to answer questions and get eligible residents signed up for benefits. Well, if you're not sure if you're eligible for it, you could do presumptive eligibility, which takes 10 minutes opposed to maybe a couple of hours on the, the written application. Presumptive, you're just basically putting through a small application to get approved for that day and for 30 days until they've decided yes or no for sure. Future events so will take place each Monday of the month with locations set up in Baxter Springs, Galena, and Weir. A natural gas company plants a big donation in support of a garden started in the memory of a beloved Carl Junction teacher. Mindy Doyle worked as a paraprofessional in the special education department at Carl Junction for 13 years what? before losing her battle with cancer. Mindy's garden was built last year in her memory. Today, Southern Star Central Gas Pipeline donated 100 plants to be planted in the garden. They also brought in a large group of people to plant and shape the garden. It means a lot because, you know, a lot of people may not recognize our uh, name on the side of our truck, you know, uh, throughout town. But when we can come out and uh, do a service like this for the community, it uh, gives back not only for the company, but for the people that work for us. You know, we, we live and, and serve this community uh, through Southern Star. In April, Mindy was awarded the Carl Junction Support Staff of the Year for the 2022-2023 calendar year. Libraries are known for letting the public borrow many things, but not their statues outside. KOM Samantha Walker has more on how the community is celebrating the replacement of a beloved statue at the Joplin Public Library. It's so rare that anything, you know, on the on the public library property would be met, messed with or damaged or taken. And so I was very disbelieving. I couldn't believe that that had even happened. And then I had a lot of questions about like why, what could even what could they even do with it? Shock. That's the feeling many community members have had after a popular statue at the Joplin Public Library was stolen nearly one year ago. When the statue went missing last year, I was very sad. 
Although a suspect has been identified and is awaiting trial for the theft, the statue has never been recovered. The work titled Two Kids on Bench was a donation from the Kiwanis Club of Joplin. Library staff say the structure is well loved by the community. I was kind of speechless whenever the community, like the outpouring of love and just messaging from the community came about. So, so I know people really like that bench. I would see them interacting with it and their kids taking photos with it every day. And it was that community reaction that drove the Kiwanis Club and other community donors to figure out a way to replace the bench. The Joplin Kiwanis Club is all about serving the children of our Joplin area. And uh, we felt that this statue uh, represents uh, the benefit of the Joplin Library for the children of the area. And the generosity has not gone unnoticed by even the youngest of library patrons. Thanks to the community of, of bringing the statue back. Because, because you brought the statue back and kids will be probably full of joy. And she has a warning for any thieves thinking about trying to take the new statue. Well, I will say put it back where it belongs. If I don't, let's get rough. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Well, the Kiwanis Club of Joplin is also donating insurance to help protect the new replacement statue. Well, Southeast Kansas high school student drowns just hours after graduation. We'll have that story coming up. And authorities investigate a propane explosion which took the lives of four people in Douglas County, Missouri. We'll have the latest. Pay for your AC. A Southeast Kansas high school graduate dies in a drowning at Big Hill Lake east of Cherryville. According to the Montgomery County Chronicle, 17-year-old Alonzo Juan Juan died in a drowning incident at the lake on Saturday afternoon. Just hours before, Alonzo received his diploma from Field Kindley High School in Coffeyville. A GoFundMe account has been created to help raise funds to have Alonzo's body returned to his parents in Guatemala. We have a link to Alonzo's GoFundMe account on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Authorities in Jasper County respond to reports of a car crashing into a creek. The call came in just before 8 this morning. Troopers say a westbound driver on Baseline Boulevard overcorrected and drove off the left side of the road into the Slater Branch Creek, taking out a sign and slamming into a tree. The driver of the vehicle refused medical treatment and that was later taken to a local hospital with minor injuries. Crews battle a blaze on board a train engine early Sunday morning. The call came in just after 2.45 to Cherokee County authorities. Columbus Fire Rescue joined the effort, assisting rail staff to avoid the spread of fire to the rest of the unit. No injuries were reported. New details about an explosion in a Douglas County home that claimed the lives of four people. Today, dozens were gathered at a cafe the family owned to honor the victims. Charmel Odell has the story. We've always been about uh, coming together in a time of, of disaster, the time of need for one another. Saturday evening, deputies and firefighters rushed to an explosion near State Highway 442B in Good Hope. So when I arrived on scene at this one, uh, it looked like a tornado had hit it. This scene was different. It was unlike anything Sheriff Chris DeGaze has seen before. I could tell that there was an explosion of some type. I didn't see anywhere in there where anything was burnt. Um, I went in uh, around the scene, made sure that there were no additional victims that, that, that were yelling out for help. Um, I did locate the four decedents. Killed in the blast, 59-year-old Salvador Haro, 51-year-old Sylvia Haro, 27-year-old Salvador Haro Jr., and a 16-year-old juvenile whose name will not be released. Deputies tell us the cause, home renovations. We'd received some information that they had received a new gas stove on Friday. Um, we did locate that stove um, outside the residence uh, that had been, uh, I say outside the residence, the, the blast had placed it outside the residence. Um, and it appeared that the new stove had been hooked up. Sheriff DeGay says it's believed the stove was set up improperly. And then the propane settled to the lower portion of the residence in the basement. The explosion was so loud, DeGay says it could be heard from several miles away. The amount of uh, debris and the wide range that this uh, explosion caused 
I mean, it was heard all the way to Forsyth. And I figured it was like a sonic boom or something. The sheriff says if you use propane, watch for dangerous warning signs. If you smell propane, turn your propane off, call your gas company, call a technician, have a pressure test done. A little later, a big day on the ball diamond for some area teams. John has that story and more coming up in sports. And we're tracking some storms moving in tomorrow afternoon, and I'll have all those details right after the break. When sets atop the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex, home of Connect to Culture and Spiva Center for the Arts. It's been a pretty warm day today. We got to the upper to mid 80s, which is well above average for this time of year. But let's take a look outside at downtown Joplin from the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Nice shot. We've got a few clouds out there, but we're not seeing any type of severe weather today. Those clouds will continue in for the next few hours, but most of the rain will be north of us. Kansas City is going to get some rain, but we're going to stay dry all the way until tomorrow. We've got some storms moving in, a cold front pushing through in the afternoon. So we've got a slight risk for most of the counties. If you're south of Chenu, Pittsburgh, you're going to be in a slight risk. Now, Nevada and a few of those northeastern counties in an elevated risk, level three out of five. Now, there is a chance that when we get a little bit closer to this event, the elevated risk may dip down a little bit further into our counties just as we see these storms really start to develop and fire off. But right now, still just a slight risk, so a level 2 out of 5. Timing about 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. So we've got two rounds of storms rolling through, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But the main threats, hail up to golf ball size and strong winds up to 70 to 75 miles per hour can also rule out a tornado as well, but the main threat is going to be those strong damaging wind gusts. All right, future track. So staying dry tonight, most of the day looking pretty good on Tuesday. We've got a few showers pushing through way ahead of the cold front. These are not going to develop into any kind of severe threat, uh, but you might see some showers popping up around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. They'll push out of here. Then we've got that first line of storms. It develops on the frontal boundary, but that front staying where it is and these storms are going to continue to push further southeast as they do and they get away from the frontal boundary they'll start to fall apart and then reform and we're going to see that happen later in the evening around 8 p.m so we'll have those two lines one first line just passed then it'll start to dissipate and reform back along the frontal boundary later in the evening and these are the storms that are really going to fire off we've got a few isolated cells along this line of storms and like I said, main threat will be strong damaging wind gusts up to 70, 75 miles per hour. But we also can't rule out a tornado um, as well. So these will pass by in the overnight hours a little bit later and it gets to be midnight starting to make its way out of the south southeastern counties. And fortunately, the frontal boundary will retreat and in the morning we've got some storms firing back up along the frontal boundary about 6 30 in the morning these aren't going to be as strong because morning time hours we've got more stable air mass in place but we will still see some maybe localized flooding and still stronger wind gusts so those will continue to push southeast again in the early morning hours 7 30 a.m joplin getting some rain but not a severe threat and then it'll continue to push out of here and we'll have scattered thunderstorm chances for the rest of your wednesday now we've got this alert day set for tuesday mostly in the afternoon hours that's where we're really looking at that threat and those will continue well into the morning on wednesday but scattered thunderstorm chances continue on and off all the way through saturday all right those temperatures are pretty warm too. we're we're getting to that time of the year it's starting to warm up but that just means that the severe weather threat will start to go away. Okay. And we won't have those drastic changes oh, so yeah. much. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, still ahead, Carl Junction and Webb City Baseball meet for the second time this year in the district championship. And Diamond High School softball plays in the state semifinals. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Wire, the homeowner with a
Diamond High School softball has been one of the top teams in class two all season, and now is the time to really prove that the Wildcats are one of the last four teams standing at the Missouri softball championship site in Springfield. All roads lead to this, the class two final four in Springfield, 36 and one Diamond faces 24 and six Willow Springs. Wildcats score the first run of the game. In the first inning, Lauren Turner drives in Caitlin Surrey in an RBI single. Diamond trails three to two, but not for long. In the fifth, Sarah Roselle smashes this over the left fielder's head. Two runs will score. Wildcats lead four to three, and they are far from finished. Caitlin Surrey comes up to bat and skies one into left field. That drops as well. It's now seven to three, Diamond. We're still in the fifth inning. Talon Reeder comes to the plate, hits a line drive into left as well. That keeps the line moving. Turner comes in to score. It's a nine to three lead. Wildcats keep bringing batters to the plate. Cabri Parmley gets the final RBI of a 10 run fifth inning. Diamond beats Willow Springs 13 to three in the class two semifinals. The Wildcats will play in the state championship game tomorrow morning. Their opponent in the championship game is Kennett, who had nearly as good of a win in its semifinal this afternoon. The Indians beat Lone Jack 11 to four. They have a record of 25 and eight. Meanwhile, Diamond tries to finish its season without a loss to any Missouri teams. First pitch tomorrow is scheduled for 11 a.m. And as the academic year concludes, so too does Carl Junction's time in the Central Ozark Conference. Beginning next year, the Bulldogs will play in the Ozark Mountain Conference. Tonight, though, the Bulldog baseball team has one last COC rivalry game. And it's a big one. The Bulldogs face Webb City in the Class 5 District 7 Championship game at Warren Turner Field in Joplin. Cardinals are defending district champions. These two met once in the regular season which was a 5-0 Web City victory. We'll have the highlights and post-game reaction from this one later tonight at 9 and 10. Switching gears to Major League Baseball, the Cardinals just finished up a series against the Red Sox. Tonight they faced another AL East team, the Orioles. Sonny Gray is the expected starting pitcher for the Redbirds. He has a 5-2 record and 3.05 ERA so far this season. First pitch is in about 20 minutes. Over in Kansas City, the Royals also at home this evening. They play host to the Tigers and are coming off a three-game sweep of Oakland over the weekend. The Royals have an 18-8 record at home this season, which is fifth best in all of Major League Baseball. First pitch is scheduled for 640. That's it for sports. We'll be back after this. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. The city of Carthage hosts another special council meeting to discuss the removal of Mayor Dan Reif. Plus, some Lamar, Missouri residents present a proposal to city officials to save the town's aquatic center. And as parents prepare for the summer phrase, I'm bored, we look into the health benefits of boredom. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. All right, quick check of the weather. We've got some storms rolling in, not tonight, but tomorrow afternoon, and they could be severe, so we've got that alert day set, and scattered thunderstorm chances continue all week long. All right, well, thank you for watching. We're going to see you right back here at 10. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow. captioning on